You might be missing some crucial pieces in your understanding of UX, UI, or product design that are glaring to others, but that you might be a little too close to see. You might also have a lot of relevant experience or transferable skills that you're not aware of or that you're underselling. But how exactly do you figure that out? Well, I've created something to help you out. For the last six years, I have been doing this skills assessment test with every one of my incoming product design students. This helps them recognize, tie together, and frame all of their experience and skills. Some of them are transitioning from graphic design or software engineering, and others from completely different fields like architecture or business administration. I've created this worksheet inside of Notion so that you can interact with it, and you can duplicate this right to your Notion workspace using the link in the description. So first, you're going to find a little summary of what this skills assessment is about. Then you're going to see the instructions here. So basically this revolves around a database table with a skills chart. And I've broken this down into skills category in the first column, then a specific task that involves that skill. And then, and this is the most important part, your skills story. Now, whenever you are going for an interview or you're setting up your case studies or doing a presentation, storytelling is so important. And it's really what separates designers that are able to demonstrate experience versus designers that are sort of just regurgitating buzzwords or saying things they've done without being able to back it up with experience. So let me explain what I mean. Let's say that you're looking at your analytical skills. A specific task could be to analyze user behavior. Now you can say, I analyzed user behavior in this project that I did. Yes, that's all well and good, but just about every single designer can say that. But what they can't say is the specific story where they were working with a team where they had two weeks to gather all of this data and they analyze the user interaction data from heat maps, click tracking, user navigation paths on websites, and then they did something with that and it resulted in this. That is a really specific story that only you can tell from your experience. And that's what we mean about storytelling and skills stories. So each one of these has an example story to inspire you and kick it off. Now for each one of these general skills categories, you can give yourself a rating. So you can just put in a number here, let's say five, and then that can just be based on how confident you are, how many skill stories and touch points of experience you have doing this particular skill or how many tasks you've done inside of this skill category. And of course you can open up this task and keep track of all of these different things. So you wanna give yourself a rating between one and five for each of these skills one being not very confident and 10 being I'm a pro at this. And kind of a good rule of thumb for that is that if you've got about 10 different specific tasks that you've done in this skills category, then you can give yourself a 10. So kind of like one point per specific task. Another way that you can view this table is to click on the board view and that's going to put your skills chart in a different view. And that way you can more easily visually add specific tasks to the different skills categories. So you can add another example of an analytical task by clicking on new and then just typing in the task and adding in your skills story. So again, when you're assessing this across this board, you can look right down the row and see that maybe you have two skills tasks here, you have five or six here, and then you can kind of see which areas visually that you have less experience in. Now you can change the category here by clicking on any of these tags and then, then you'll see all of the ones that are available. And as new, really important, relevant things come up in the industry, I'm always updating this file. So make sure to check for your updates. Now this column is set up with a formula so that it will calculate the total of all of your ratings. And so if this number is below 85, then there are definitely some areas that you can probably improve. Now in my course, I teach you all of these different things throughout our coursework and our exercises so that you're maximizing all of these skills based on the type of work that you are doing and the goals that you have for your career. So our course is really tailored so that you know exactly how to implement all of these things for yourself. Now, the next part is really important. And again, this is something that I do for all of my students when they come in and it's writing your personal value proposition. Now, this is the thing that's unique about you that positions yourself in the market and just really sets you up for success. 
This is the statement that becomes that radio signal that attracts all of the right opportunities to you. The first part of this is about your past. You want to talk about any background you've had, any industry that you've come in from, any training that you've had, whether that's UX, product design or not. Next, you want to talk about your present. So what types of industries are you most interested in working in? What do they need? What problems are they solving? Who are their users? Get really specific here and think about what would you be interested in working on day to day? Do you like working on shopping cart flows? Is e-commerce something that you're excited about solving for? Then think about the industries and the markets where e-commerce is a problem and how you can solve those things. Next, you're going to think about your future. How do you imagine your future impact as a designer? You may not carry the title of a UX or product designer yet, but always frame your statement as if you are a product designer. Just bring that future self into the now. So you would say something like, I am a product designer with a background in architecture rather than I'm an architect transitioning to product design. Always frame it in the future ideal that you would like. So then we're going to put all of that information into this formula. And that is I help the industry or market get this desired result by this method resulting in this outcome. So an example here could be I help startups in the health tech space increased user trust by applying my background in psychology and sociology to reduce complex information into powerful patient insights. You can be a little less specific if you want, but in my experience, being more specific is really helpful. Why? Well, think of it from a hiring manager or a CEO's point of view. They are looking for someone with a very particular set of skills and insights into their problems. I, in that position, would much rather hire someone that really is dialed into my market and my industry than someone that is a total generalist and may have done a lot of different random projects but can't hit the ground running in my company. Now you can use this assessment and all of this self-work that you've done to really create portfolio projects and frame your case studies in a way that really makes you stand out. And if you wanna do that with me, then you should definitely check out our course. It's super affordable. There are tons of students doing real projects together in here, and you will have such a head start in this crazy market, and you'll be able to get ahead, stand out, and feel confident no matter what stage of your journey you're in. So there is another useful video about nine actionable things that you can do right now to get ahead in this insane job market. So check out that video next. 